Hello, friends. It is Ms. Lynn coming to you live from Manitowoc Public Library. I am here with the talented Mary Tooley today. She is going to uh, teach us all about creepy, crawly critters. Mary, welcome. Thank you. Well, hello everybody. I am so happy to be back again at the Manitowoc Public Library doing these programs about animals. Uh, we've talked about a lot of animals in the past couple months, and this, our last program in the series, for all of you animal lovers, is about creepy, crawly creatures. Now, I know you're animal lovers. These animals might be called the unhuggables. These animals are hard to love for a lot of people, but they are a very important part of nature. Everything in nature has its place. Everything is important. And these animals that we are talking about today make up an amazing 80% of all the animals in the ocean and on land. They are very, very important. It is a huge group of animals, and they go by a very interesting name. The name of their animal group and for the big people out there, the older kids and the grown-ups, the name of the group is a phylum of animals. And their name is, as a group, the arthropod group. Arthropods. Those are our animals today. And now, kids, I know you're saying, what's an arthropod? Well, first I'm going to tell you what the word means. The word arthropod. Arthro means joints. We all have joints. You can get your joints moving right now. I have a wrist joint. I have finger joints. I have elbow joints. I have shoulder joints. Any part of your body where you can bend is a joint. So the first part of the word means joint. And the second part of the word pod, that's an easy one. It means feet. Pods are feet. So arthropods are animals that have lots of joints and lots of feet. They might have six feet. They might have eight feet. And they're always pairs. The feet and the legs always come in pairs. Six, eight, 750. <gasps> 750 legs. This is science we do for all you animal lovers. This is absolutely correct. And we're going to be talking about that critter that has 750 feet in just a minute. So we're talking about the arthropods today. And this is what makes an arthropod an arthropod. And I'll introduce them in just a minute. Okay. If you're going to be an arthropod, not a mammal like us or a bird, or an amphibian, all those other animals we talked about. If you're an arthropod animal, you're going to have a lot of legs. You are not going to have a backbone. No backbone. Oh, now this is a tough one. Just hang in there with me for just a minute. This is a little tough, but hey, I know you guys are smart. They have what is called an exoskeleton, but it's not a skeleton like ours. Our skeleton, as you all know, is inside our bodies. And our bones, the separate bones that make up our skeleton, are the hardest things we have. Our skull bone, our backbone, the hardest things in our body. Well, these animals have what is called an exoskeleton. Don't think little tiny bones. It's like a hard outer shell covering their bodies. And that hard outer shell is their protection. And as these creatures grow, as these animals grow, the shell gets too small. The shell falls off 
and there's a new shell underneath, and that keeps happening all their lives. And the last thing that these animals have is a body made out of sections. Okay, now who are these guys? Well, we're going to, I am going to tell you about five groups of animals that fit into this great big animal family, makes up 80% of everything on earth, arthropods. The first group of arthropods is no longer with us. They are, I have a fossil, a real true fossil. And for those of you who have been in fourth grade, you might have learned about this animal. The fossil is Wisconsin's official state fossil because you can dig these up if you're lucky. It's a little creature, uh, an insect that lived in water millions of years ago when uh, Wisconsin was covered with water, and it's called a trilobite. So this is a genuine fossil of a trilobite, and you know all fossils are things that have turned to rock, and there, right where my finger is pointing, is that bug, that trilobite, prehistoric and extinct. Although you can still uh, dig these up in many places in Wisconsin, part of our fossils. That's our first arthropod. Of course, you're never going to see it except in the fossil form. Now, the next fossils, or the next creatures rather, are very much with us. In fact, you can go down to Lake Michigan and see them. You can see them in rivers. And here they come, the crustaceans. The crustaceans. And here's my, my rubber one. It's a giant crayfish. Wow. Crayfish, an arthropod. Of course. It's got, what does the arthropod have to have? This crayfish has lots of legs, and the legs come in pairs, and the, pa the legs are jointed. They have lots of joints, and they have a hard outer shell. A lobster would be in this family, crustaceans, arthropods. You know, all know that lobsters have shells. And shrimp are part of this group of animals. And they are, you know what? When you look at these guys, they really do look like cousins to insects, which we're going to talk about in a minute. They're just huge. And I just so happened to have, I was walking on the beach one day, and I looked in the sand. And um, some of these crayfish lost their insides because they were dead. And the hard outer ex exoskeleton, their hard outer shell just happened to wash up on the beach. So, you know, the animal was gone, the insides, it was dead. And I picked up its outer skeleton shell, and there it is. The next one. This one I gotta be careful with. This is in that same group of crustaceans, but I gotta be real careful with this one, or I'm gonna have very cut fingers. This is a shell, a crab shell. And this crab shell was good defense for crab because, oh my goodness, it has these very, very sharp spikes on it. Really, really neat protection. See, no animal inside anymore. But a very, very, very neat exoskeleton outside shell for that crab. All right, so now the next group. Still arthropods. Oh, kids, there are millions of them, but five big groups. Uh, the next one, gee, I saw one the other day in my house. I did not scream. I did not panic because I knew it didn't want me for lunch. Centipedes. Wow, look at this cool centipede. And you will never see a centipede this big in your heart house or in your yard in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Don't worry, our centipedes are little. These guys can have 50 legs or more, all with little joints in them. Can you imagine being a centipede and keeping all those legs straight? Boy, that must be, that must be a pretty good trick to be able to use all those legs at once and not get all tangled up in your own legs. 
But they really are cool kids. Now I do have to, you know, I'm telling you the science facts. I'm telling you the truth. They do have poison. They do have fangs and they use their fangs to poison other insects, smaller ones, to get their food. If you leave them alone, they're going to leave you alone. They do not want to bite you. You are not lunch for a centipede. Um, but you probably don't want them hanging around your bathtub because you don't want to accidentally step on them because they do have poison. But no need to scream and yell too loudly because they're not out to get you. And they have cousins. Now this one, you're gonna to have to have good eyes to be able to see it. Oh, uh, one last thing about the centipedes. They do eat other bugs and bugs really are a kind of meat, right? They're kind of little meats. So they are not vegetarians at all. They are eating meat, bugs. This is a millipede. No need to worry about millipedes. They eat rotten leaves. Boy, that sounds like a terrible lunch. But to a millipede, rotten lunch, leaves are a delicious lunch. And the millipedes live under the ground. Now, these are the guys that can have up to 750 legs. But now you're gonna have to use your good artist scientist eyes, eyes that look carefully. They're little teensy tiny legs. And they are under the shell that covers the animal. So this is no worm. It has a hard outer shell. It has all those little sections, the exoskeleton, the skeleton part. Those will shed as the millipede gets bigger. And all those little tiny legs are underneath it, under the ground. You're lucky if you see one because they're just under there eating their rotten leaves for lunch. Then we have the group oh, that has such a bad reputation. And I feel so badly about this because they're not coming to get you. And people just really don't understand this group. Spiders. The spiders. Spiders. Are never, ever chasing you, trying to bite you. They just don't work that way. But they do scare people a lot. All spiders have poison. Uh, scientists would call it venom. They have fangs. The fangs are for putting the venom into what they want to eat for lunch. They definitely do not want to eat you for lunch. You are not on their menu. They take their fangs. They, if it is an orb spider, a spider that builds a web, and not all spiders build webs, they all make silk, the stuff a web is made out of, but they don't all make the web. Uh, but if it's a spider that makes a web, and this one would, this one would stay at the edge of its web till it feels the web wiggle, and it knows an insect has fallen into one of the sticky strings on its web. Not all the strings are sticky because the spider has to be able to walk in it. And then the spider goes, puts its fang into the bug, and it has juices in its fangs that digest the insides of the bug and turn the bug's insides into mush. Spiders don't eat the bug. They drink it. They drink the juices that are inside the bug that, they, that are digested by their poison or venom. Very cool. Very, very cool. So just a few things about spiders, because they, they really are kids, tremendously interesting creatures. Uh, many of them have as many as eight eyes on the top of their heads. Can you imagine walking around the world with eight eyes on the top of your head? I mean, if I were a spider, I'd be looking at the ceiling right now because my eyes would be up here. Okay, some spiders are so small that they are the small of, if you sharpen up your pencil real sharp and put a little dot on a piece of paper with your sharpened pencil, they're as small as that pencil point. But some spiders are as big as a dinner plate. You will not see those here. They live in very warm places around the equator. We call those tropical places. Um, spiders have blue blood. Now that's very cool. Our blood looks red. 
their blood looks blue. I really like that blue blood. I think that's cool. And oh, I love this about spiders. They smell with their feet. A spider smells with their feet. So they are extremely interesting animals. Summer is coming. Great time for kids. Great time for all of us. Summer is a wonderful time because we can be outside in nature. And you can watch a spider, especially at twilight, build a web if it's an orb spider. This spider, by the way, my rubber spider, oh, it's huge. But the real spider isn't this big. The real spider does live in Wisconsin. It looks like this. It is about that big. And it's really fun to watch them build webs. All spiders build webs. It takes them about an hour to build a web. And oh, it's just, just perfect. They just make them perfectly. And spiders won't hurt you. You can watch them build the web. What you have to be careful about, kids, is that you don't have an accident with the spiders. If you go camping, shake out your sleeping bag before you get into it. Because if you don't do that, you might crawl into a sleeping bag and spiders love dark places. They love dark places to hide out. You don't want to accidentally squish a spider because the spider will bite you in defending itself. If you're a camper, don't put your foot in your shoes in the morning until you shake your shoes out because a spider might have crawled into your shoes. If you're cleaning out the garage and nobody's been cleaning out junk in there for a long time, don't stick your hand in that corner to see what kind of junk you're going to clean out before you put a glove on your hand. Use your brains and you won't have to worry about spiders. Okay, I just want to show you a couple of spiders here because I got a couple of others that I brought along. I brought along a tarantula because tarantulas are way cool. I was in, I was lucky enough kids, to be in a rainforest one time, and there was a tarantula, and it was uh, it was bigger than this one. And actually, I was able to get up. Well, the spider was there. I was here, great big tarantula. Was I afraid? No, because I wasn't going to touch it. I wasn't going to pick it up, and they don't attack you. So as long as you leave them alone, you can look at them, enjoy them, and you will be safe. Uh, this one, you don't want to be bitten by it because all kids, all spiders have poison. But most all of the spiders in Wisconsin have so little poison that even if you accidentally got a bite, it's not going to kill you. We do have a few that wander in that could, could cause harm, but you know how to be careful now. But this one is a black widow, and you know, you really want to keep an eye out for this, but we're not loaded with them. If you travel around America, though, there are states that have way more spiders that have venom that could hurt us. So you always have to be careful. You don't touch them. You don't play with them. Did everybody hear that? You don't touch them. You don't play with them. But eyes are for looking, and good science kids know, boy, you can have a lot of fun looking at animals without turning them into pets. Okay, now we come to our last group, and it's the biggest group, and it is the creepy, crawly insects. And I have somewhere in here, looking, looking, I will find an insect. Here it is. Here comes our grasshopper. Jointed legs, six of them. Remember I said the bodies had parts or segments? This one has three segments. The older kids, if you're at home, you can say it out loud. You probably learned it in school. It has a head, a middle called a thorax, and a back end called an abdomen. So three body parts, six legs, must be an insect. This one happens to be my lovely grasshopper here, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of different kinds of insects. And they are survivors, kids. Insects are survivors. For every one person on the planet, okay, so for you, for me, for every person on the planet, there are 200 million insects. They're everywhere, kids, they're everywhere. So it's good to know about them. It's fun to watch them, and we're going to play a game now. We're going to play a game called Guess the Insect. Okay, I'm going to give you three clues. Think, think, and see if you can figure out what insect I am going to ask you to guess. First clue, this insect is a special kind of beetle. Second clue, we are a very pretty 
orangey red color on our outer shell. Orangey red. Getting some ideas. Third clue. We have lots of spots. Mm -hmm. Got it? Got it? Ladybugs! Oh my goodness. Ladybugs. Here comes our ladybug puppet. Okay, here she is. By the way, her eyes really don't look like that. They just gave her goofy eyes. But a ladybug. Now, ladybugs actually, when they are born, don't have, or when they hatch, I should say, they don't have the spots. They get the spots a little bit later. Like all insects, Ladybugs go through changes in their life. Remember when we talked about the fabulous frogs and we said it started out as a tadpole and then it changed or, oh, I bet some of you remember the word. Metamorphosis means changed. The tadpole metamorphosized into a frog. Well, these guys, these insects, all the insects, they go through changes too. So we're going to take a look at what those changes are here with our ladybug. First, mom ladybug lays her eggs. Now, you know they made this ladybug really big so you could see the eggs. The real ladybug and the real eggs are very tiny. But she lays her eggs on a leaf, and then out of that hatches the little larva larva, caterpillar, and they do what all larvae do. Looks like a creepy crawly little thing. And they eat, 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 and they eat. That's the job of a larva or a caterpillar. Stuff yourself till you can't move. And then uh, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden when they, oh, they're so big, they just, uh, they turn themselves into something called a pupa and then they rest. Then the eating is done, no more munching, and magical changes happen. And this is Ladybug. She hatches out of her pupa, and oh my goodness, look carefully. She's yellow, and you can sort of see where the spots are going to be, and then when she dries, her wings, which are underneath that shell, her wings come out, and she is a grown-up ladybug. Ladybugs do a lot of good things for us kids. Uh, we need them. They eat a lot of uh, insects that might want to eat up your garden, like aphids. And I just want to say one thing about them that is especially important for all of us who live along Lake Michigan. Sometimes your house gets filled with just tons of these in the winter. These Asian beetles come into your house. They look like ladybugs. And don't worry, they're not going to eat your food, and they're not going to look for you to sting you or anything. They come in in winter, and they hide in the cracks in your windows, and they sleep. They want to sleep in your nice warm house, and you might not see them at all until spring. And I saw probably 300 of them coming out of the cracks in the windows in our house in spring. They're, they don't want to be in your house in summer because mom ladybug wants to find a tree where she can put her eggs. They won't lay their eggs in your house, so you don't have to worry about that. But ladybugs. Okay, next one. Let's see if you can get this one. Three clue. First clue. Uh-oh. We're beetles too, but again, we're a special kind of a beetle. Look for this second insect I want you to guess on a very warm summer night, a very warm summer night. That's when you go out and look for these insects. Third clue, it's going to be easy to find these insects because they are going to flash a bright light. I think you know who they are. They have two different names, and they're both right. Our family calls them lightning bugs. 
And lightning bug is a good name for them because their back end lights up very brightly. But you can also call them fireflies. So they have two names, lightning bugs or fireflies. By the way, kids, I just love this puppet maker. It's a woman. She's been making puppets for many, many years. And she does things right. She gives you a glove to put your hand in, but she puts an extra finger on it. So the lightning bug, the firefly, has six legs like a real insect. Okay, so what do we know about lightning bugs? Well, the guys, the boys, are the ones you're looking at flying around in your yard. The guys fly around your yard on a warm summer night. They flash their light as a signal. Who do you think they're flashing the signal to? Not you. They are flashing their light, and it has a pattern. Different kinds of ladybugs have different patterns. Long, long, short, dum, 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 dum. Different patterns of light, flash, 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 flash. They are flashing to the girls. The girls are not flying around in here yet. The girls are sitting down below in the bushes or on a tree branch. They're just staying still, looking up at the sky, checking out the lights from the boys. If the girl sees a guy flashing and she likes his light flashes, she lights up her light. And then the boy flies down to the girl and they come together, that's called mating, for the purpose of allowing her to make eggs and then she makes her eggs, lays her eggs, and in three weeks, the life of the ladybug is over. They only live about three weeks. Some of them never even eat. They only really have one job after they hatch out of their pupa. Their job is to find each other, fly around a couple of weeks, mate, and then they die. So. A lucky night in Wisconsin is a warm summer night when the ladybugs are really flying around in your yard and they are so, 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 so beautiful. By the way, different kinds of ladybugs have different colored lights too. They can be yellow, they can be orange. And in some parts of America, the ladybugs, I've never seen it here, but in some parts of America, the ladybug lights can be green and it's very bright. That's called bioluminescence or living light. Very neat. Fireflies. Okay, now this one, um, oh, I love this next instinct, but I don't know if you're going to know it. This is a little bit harder, but give it a try. Give it a try. We are called flies. That's part of their name, flies, but we are not a fly. Well, that's a tough clue. Second clue. Some people call us darning needles. A darning needle is a needle about this long and a big, strong needle. Some people call us darning needles because we look like a needle. And the third clue is we are insects that can do anything, absolutely anything a helicopter can do. We can fly straight ahead. We are an insect that can fly straight up in the air. We can go straight down. We can stay in one place in the air and hover. That means not go forward, backwards, up or down. We just stay in one place. Now that is pretty cool. Do you have any idea who this insect is? If you've seen them, you've probably seen them close to water because when they're a larva, they live in water. And it's a dragonfly. Wow. I love my dragonfly model here because we are never going to see a dragonfly this big. We are never going to see a dragonfly this big. But in prehistoric times, when there were dinosaurs roaming the earth, the dragonflies were this big. Fossil dragonflies have been found with wings that were this wide across, and that is pretty cool. Well, our dragonflies don't quite make that size, but they can be pretty big, and if you're hanging around water, 
and you're looking, you will see dragonflies. And sometimes uh, around the river, you can see hundreds of dragonflies. We use, I live right next to Lake Michigan, and we usually have um, a few days in summer where we literally have, and kids, I am not making this up, we literally have thousands of dragonflies in our yard for a few days when there's a big dragonfly hatch. And this is a dragonfly that crashed in my driveway. I don't know why he crashed, but he or she crashed. So it was dead and I could pick it up and put it in a box. So I would have you call this a specimen to show you. They're a wonderful insect. And I am very happy when we have a dragonfly hatch in our yard because in addition to being able to fly straight up, straight down, forward, backward, can twist and turn in any way. They're also taking their front legs as they're flying, grabbing insects out of the air. They love mosquitoes. They love mosquitoes and they slam the mosquitoes in their mouth and they can eat 300 of them in a night. So that's one dragonfly, 300 mosquitoes that aren't in your yard anymore. So this is an insect that is very, very, very easy to like. And sometimes kids, if you're swimming in a lake, a dragonfly will actually land on you. You don't have to scream, you don't have to freak out. They do not hurt people. They really don't. They are true helpers to us. And let's say a few words about the mosquitoes that the dragonfly would eat. It's the girls who get us. The girl mosquitoes are the ones who want us. The boys leave us absolutely alone. They drink plant juices. They could care less about biting us. It's the girl mosquitoes that want us. Why do they want us? They come looking for us. Spiders aren't looking for you. Girl mosquitoes are looking for us. They know when we breathe out. They can know where there's carbon dioxide. That means a person breathed out. I'm going for that person. You know how sweaty you get on a hot summer day? They can smell your sweat. And those girls know just where to find us and zing. In goes the stinger and you get a mosquito bite and it itches and it's crummy. And then she is so happy because she needs your blood to be a good mother. That's it kids. I'm not saying it's good for us to be bitten by mosquitoes, but for her it's a good thing because she needs something called protein that we have in our blood to help her make her good eggs. That's why she's biting you. So she can make good eggs, put her eggs in very quiet water. She, does, she wouldn't put them in Lake Michigan too wavy, but if you have a bucket of water and you let stand in your sandbox, that's a great place for a mom mosquito to lay her eggs. And you'll have lots of mosquitoes if you have a lot of quiet water, quiet meaning not wavy in your yard. So, and it's really not the itch of the bite that's the problem, kids. The problem with mosquitoes and people is mosquitoes carry diseases. So when she opens up your skin, you know that's not good to put things in your body that don't belong in your body. And she might have bad germs and those germs then can get right inside. So that's why mosquitoes are very dangerous to people sometimes when they're carrying certain kinds of germs. Now we've got one I saved for last. An amazing insect. I only have one clue. You only need one clue. What insects are the most, 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 most beautiful insects in the world? They are so beautiful. No, don't you? Butterflies. Butterflies are insects. Sometimes people forget that a butterfly is an insect, but that's really all they are. They are but insects that are fabulously beautiful. Like all insects, they start out as a little tiny egg, out hatches the caterpillar, the larva, and that caterpillar's job, just like in the 100 Caterpillar book by our beloved Eric Carle, 
that caterpillar really does eat and eat and eat and eat, but not ice cream cones and things like in the book. They eat leaves and leaves and leaves and leaves, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they turn themselves into a pupa, and then they transform, and up they come, and they are beautiful, beautiful butterflies. This butterfly, gorgeous. It's about that big, for real. It is beautiful. It is called the blue morpho. You won't see it in your backyard. It lives in warm places like the tropics, a place that doesn't get winter. But there are other beautiful, beautiful butterflies that we do have here in Wisconsin. And summer is coming, kids. It's, it's just a special time of year, especially for us animal lovers, because we can be outside without freezing our toes, and we can be looking for all these beautiful animals. See if you can find, flying around, how many different kinds of butterflies you can spot this summer. Come to the library, get some books on butterflies, and start to learn some of their names. Now, this is the Red Admiral. I saw lots of these in my yard last summer, and I live the same place you do, Manitowoc. If you have sharp, good science eyes, you're going to see these. They call it the Red Admiral, but it's really kind of orange. It's about, kids, it's about this big. It's not a huge butterfly. It's not as big as the big orange monarch, but there are a lot of them around. <gasps> I saw a lot of these this last summer. This one is a swallow tail, and the tail is just that little piece of wing that hangs down. These are bigger butterflies. They can be about that big. They can be black with yellow, or they can be the opposite. They can be yellow with black, more yellow than black. Watch for them. This one you're not gonna see in your yard, but I thought it was so pretty I put the picture there. This is another one that lives in warm all year round places, but what I love about this, and I wanted you to see it, look at the top wings. They're like a window. They're transparent. You can see right through the wings. Butterflies are so beautiful. And of course, the butterfly that you see all the time here in Wisconsin until fall when it takes a little trip to Mexico. And that is, you know this one, a monarch butterfly. It's one of those creepy crawly creatures, but we don't think of it as creepy crawly because it's the most beautiful insect in the world. And monarchs really like coming to visit us in summer. And in winter, away they go to Mexico. And believe it or not, this tree in Mexico is solidly covered with monarch butterflies. You see the orange ones on your screen, the orange ones pop out, but all those brown things around them, that's the monarch because when a butterfly rests, and they go down to Mexico to take naps during the winter, their wings fold. When a butterfly eats or when it rests, its wings are closed. And the underside of the monarch wing is camouflaged to blend in with the tree bark that keeps it safer. Now, one last thing I want to tell you about butterflies. There are also moths. So there are some things that you can look for to tell a butterfly from a moth. So when you're, when you're a science kid in your backyard, how do you know if it's a butterfly? Or how do you know if it's a moth? Well, it's actually pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Butterflies have, eat with their wings closed. So if it's during the day and the wings are closed and this creature is in the flower, it's going to be a butterfly. Moths come out at night, mostly. They like it at night. And when a moth rests, its wings stay open. So on a, on a hot summer night, if you look at your screen door and this thing that looks like a butterfly is plastered with its wings open on your screen door not moving, that's probably going to be a moth. And then there's another real good way of telling a moth from a butterfly. A moth has a big fat body. A butterfly has a skinny body. But the real giveaway, the best clue, is a blown up picture of a moth 
Look at the moth antennas. They look like feathers, don't they? Feather-looking antennas for the moth. And I think you all know what the antennas on a butterfly look like. The puppet again is made correctly. She has a stick with a little ball on the top. This is a butterfly antenna, stick and a ball. Two little things that look like feathers, that is going to be a moth. Here's a moth that you can probably see, and it is a Cecropia moth. It's a big one. You'll probably be able to find one of these this summer. And my last picture, my last moth. I've never seen one, kids. They live in Wisconsin. They're huge. They're huge. And I really want to see one, so I'm going to be keeping my eyes open this summer, too, to see if I can see the great big green Luna moth. It is a beauty. And it has those feathery antennas. And I've known people in Wisconsin, people I know, who have looked at their screen door on a summer night, and these things are big, and one was resting on their screen door. So lots of good things to see this summer, lots of good things to do this summer, and lots of good books at the library that will help you know what you're looking at. So you can be a good animal lover, and I hope you have a wonderful summer. Now, we do have an art project. Of course we have an art project. We always have an art project because I'm an art teacher. So, you are going to make a monarch butterfly puppet. And in your bag, you should find a piece of orange paper. Take your orange paper, orange paper, put it this direction. Some of your teachers probably call this the hot dog way. Put it the hot dog way and fold it in half. Zip, zip, easy. Now in your bag of directions, if you don't have a bag with directions, uh, you can very easily make this at home, even with you know things you have. If you have white paper, you can just color it orange. And we still have some bags available at the library, Miss Mary. Oh, good, oh good. So you can come to the library and get a bag. If you don't have the paper and the supplies, that's great. That's absolutely great. Okay. Uh, you can look at the directions, or I'll show you what to do. This is the fold. Y'all know what the fold is. Take your pencil or your crayon and make a shape. It's sort of like you're making the two wings, but you're only making half of the butterfly. So you're going to cut it to look like that. Got it? So you make the lines, sort of in the middle, and then you, it's a big loop and another loop, two ways. You open it up, you've got a butterfly. And we're gonna make a monarch, make a skinny body, take the little piece of black paper, make two little antenna and glue them on. And then look at a picture, a photo or a drawing of a monarch butterfly. Now, for the little kids in the audience, if you're two, three years old, you can just make any kind of design you want on your butterfly. Hey, big guys, big guys, you are old enough to look at this butterfly and be what I call a science artist. You know, sometimes we draw whatever we want. That's okay. But sometimes we want to make it really look like a real thing. Look at those beautiful patterns. Oh my gosh, don't get discouraged. You can make a butterfly that looks pretty much like a monarch. Take your black crayon or marker, make a big fat black border around the edges. Do you see how the, use your good science eyes, the border of the butterfly's wings are all black. And the paper is already orange, so all you have to do is look at the patterns. Kids, think it doesn't have to be perfect. When, when, we, when we learn how to be artists, we can make mistakes, it's okay. That's much better than copying or tracing because you learn by your mistakes. Do the best you can. It's still going to turn out to look great, and it will still look like a monarch. And then, when you're all done, you can put white spots in the black. There are white spots. Works best with the uh, oil crayon, but you can, they got one, right? Yeah, you got one in your bag. They're very cool. And if you make a night picture, they're very good for stars in the sky, too, if you want to make nighttime pictures. So put the white spots in the black. And when, when you've done the best you can, it doesn't have to be perfect. Come on. It's
It's for fun and for learning how to draw a little bit better. And every time you draw, you get a little bit better. When you're all done, you take your envelope, you lick it, and you stick it. And then cut off about that much off one end. Your envelope, the long way, cut off one end. That's so your hand can go in it and make a hand puppet. Then when the glue on the envelope dries, glue your butterfly onto the envelope the tall way. The tall way, not the hot dog way. The tall way. And the end that you cut off the envelope, make sure it's on the bottom. You know why. If it's not on the bottom, your butterfly is gonna fly upside down, which is okay. But he'd probably get, he or she would probably get a little dizzy or something. So try to remember to keep that open part of your envelope on the bottom and wait for the glue to dry. After you put the butterfly on the envelope and glue it down and put the glue on the edges of the envelope, because it works best on the edges, wait for it to dry, be patient, and when it's all dry, slip your hand into the envelope. This is a puppet, so I can just slip my hand in. Your butterfly will fly over. Have a great summer, kids. I have loved doing these animal programs for all of you animal lovers. And I'll see you this summer at the library with another animal program all about animal tales. Oh, this going to be fun. Thank you very much, Mary, for coming in. Yes, Mary mentioned we have our True Tales of Tales program, which will be on June 16th. So we've got a few weeks before that happens. But registration for that program will open up next Thursday, July next Thursday. 5th, I believe it is, or July 3rd, 3rd. June, June 3rd, June 3rd, June 3rd. Oh my gosh, we got it. June 3rd at 5 o'clock, next Thursday at 5 o'clock. Now, we will have the bags like we've been doing, but we will also have the opportunity for some small group that you'll be able to come into the library and listen to Miss Mary in person and do the project with her. Both of those registrations for in person and for the bag, if you can't come to the library or if um, you want to just take the project home and do it, both of those registrations open up next Thursday, June 3rd at five o'clock. You have to sign up on the website www.manitowaclibrary.org slash SRP. Look for the True Tales of Tales program. Again, that registration opens up next week. All we ask, do not sign up to come here and to get a bag. Pick one or the other, right. okay? Because Miss Mary will have the supplies have here, the supplies for you. or you can right. take it home and do it at home. So we will see you again very soon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ms. Mary, for oh, being here today. so much fun talking about animals. We'll see you again real soon.